Episode 4. Hello, uh, this is Andre Davis, and about three years ago, I did a series of YouTube videos that focused on the following question. What are the things holding America back from the realization of successful, affluent African-American communities being the norm and not the exception? In this episode, we're talking about Plessy v. Ferguson, uh, the importance of social equality, how Plessy v. Ferguson disallowed a property right in being white, and the importance of self-responsibility. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you tune in for more. If you're looking for a good book, check out Our Two Societies. Um, it's available pretty much everywhere. You can check it out on Amazon and print or e-copy. There's a audio copy as well that's available at audio. I mean, audible.com. Enjoy. Okay, today we'll start off again with the definition of success because I believe it is so important to this conversation. Um, to, okay, so here we go. The first one I came across is an accomplishment of an aim or goal. The second, an attainment of popularity or profit. We want to concentrate on the first because the second is killing the African American community. Um, the first one, the accomplishment of an aim or or a goal, speaks directly to self responsibility. The second one speaks to passivity and luck. So, if you are born lucky with a voice from God and you become a great singer and entertainer a la Michael Jackson or Prince, um, or you're born lucky with physical attributes that are ridiculous, like LeBron James, uh, NBA star, that, you know, that's going to make you popular, and that popularity is going to bring you profits. What the real problem is, what happens to people who are not born lucky? Okay, so we want to concentrate on something we can take control of, and that's our own self and so with self-responsibility, we're going to accomplish uh, an aim or a goal. And that speaks directly to social equality. And I'll say something about that right quick. Um, as we all believe in the United States and mainly in the Western world, that equality before the law is an inherent right. Okay? However, social equality is not an inherent right. So legal equality, an inherent right. Social equality is not an inherent right. It is an inherent responsibility, a, a responsibility that should not be infringed upon by any one or any group of people. All right, so let's move forward to an excerpt from my book talking about Plessy Ferguson. Um, now, I was... Plessy v. Ferguson. Now, as you all may recall from your Black History Month, uh, Homer Plessy was criminally charged with violating Louisiana's Act 111. And he did this by sitting in a section of a train reserved for white passengers only. But one of Mr. Plessy's arguments was that he was, in fact, white and therefore should be entitled to all the privileges thereof. However, by blood, Mr. Plessy was only, although he, he was only one-eighth white, I mean one-eighth black, overwhelmingly more white than black, by blood, the society, society in society and under the law, he was deemed black. And therefore, the court ultimately ruled against him. I hope you guys followed that. Um... The ruling illustrated the Supreme Court's historical tolerance of unequal citizenship, as well as judicial recognition of a form of property only accessible to persons deemed to be white citizens, effectively separating 
the American citizenry into two classes. The principle that the state could exclude a particular portion of the citizenry from certain property reserved exclusively for white citizens was effectively recognizing a property right inherent in merely being white. Now, since a basic element of a right in property is the ability to exclude because there could be no value in the property if everyone could oscillate as they see fit. Now, what you didn't learn, most like most likely didn't learn in uh, during Black History Month, because I didn't learn it until I read the case in law school, was there was an exception to that rule. The exception to rule number, well, act number 111. And at, and I, I'll quote, nothing in this act shall be construed as applying to nurses qualifying, I mean, nurses attending children of the other race. So again, nothing in this act shall be construed as applying to nurses attending children of the other race, end quote. Now, that exception to the rule granted, granted to a qualifying black nurse uh, gave that nurse the opportunity to ride alongside white passengers. This, in effect, grants granting that nurse a higher status than blacks without the qualifications. Um, the black nurse seated in the whites only section in the train in 1897 might be equated today with a black person such as Michael Jordan, that who has become rich and famous, thus qualifying him to move into a predominantly white, affluent neighborhood without fear of harassment by neighbors and law enforcement authorities. Now, without some extraordinary qualification, an average African-American in such a neighborhood is quite likely to be accosted rather than assisted during an interaction with a police officer. Let's think if Trayvon Martin was actually Dwayne Wade. Okay, um, now I'm quoting from the dissent here. Of course, an exclusion or entitlement of a group of citizens based on an inherent physical attribute is both unequal and unjust. And society necessarily stigmatizes the non-entitled group. Okay, end quote. Um, I'm paraphrasing some of this with the dissent and some of this is mine, but um, it is at best a dream to expect a stigmatized, I mean socially unequal, and at the time legally unequal, people to achieve an equal level of liberty, prosperity, and happiness under equal protection of the law when the law itself establishes entitlements and immunities for a privileged, privileged class of citizens. Okay, so I'll say it again. It is at best a dream to expect a stigmatized people to achieve an equal level of liberty, prosperity, and happiness under equal protection of the law when the law itself establishes entitlements and immunities for a privileged class of citizens. So, we don't have that anymore, right? Plessy v. Ferguson was overturned. We are all equal under the law. However, we are not all deemed socially unequal. And let me put it out there. There is no perfect level of social equality. It doesn't exist. All right? But there can be a better level of social equality. And that's the aim here, to get to a better level of social equality. And with that better level of social equality as the means, the end can definitely be more affluent black neighborhoods. Okay, I'll keep reading from this in the next episode. See you later.